Active Directory queries. When you have a large Active Directory database with lots of users, it can be a real challenge to make changes to those accounts simultaneously. Even identifying what accounts need to be changed can present a similar challenge. I mean, can you imagine having 10,000 user accounts all with different settings, and then you have to locate every account that has a specific property set, and you'll need to find all of those accounts and change every one of them? Well, have you got a weekend or two free? Well, with the query feature in Active Directory Users and Computers, you don't need a free weekend. In fact, you won't even need a free couple of hours. Finding out this sort of information is exactly what the query feature was designed for. All right, well, enough talking about it. Let's go and open up Active Directory Users and Computers and we'll take a look. So we'll click on Start. We'll go to Administrative Tools and we'll launch Active Directory Users and Computers. And up here on the left-hand side of our console, we can see we have the Saved Queries folder. So if we select that, in the right-hand side, by default, you can see there's nothing to show as we don't have any saved queries. So let's go and create one. We'll right-click on Save Queries and we'll choose New Query. And the first thing we need to do is to give this query a name. So let's use this query feature to look for accounts that have their password set to never expire. So I'm going to call this one No Expired Passwords. And we can give it an optional description if we like. So I'm going to say here, searches for passwords that do not expire. Now underneath this, we can see that the query root is set to our domain root. Now this means that our query will be run against every OU or container in our entire domain, including any subcontainers as well. So to change this, just to search within a particular OU, we can click on the Browse button and then just choose the OU from the list here and click on OK. But let's just leave it at the default and run it against all of our domain. And our final step down here is to define a query. So we'll click on the Define Query button and this will pop up the Find Common Queries dialog box. And as you can see from this drop down list here, it defaults to Common Queries, which is going to search for users, computers or groups. Now a moment ago, I said we wanted to search for any user account that has the password never expires box checked in the properties of the user account. So this query is a pretty simple one. All we need to do is check the non-expiring password box here and click OK. But if we wanted to narrow down the search a bit, let's find all accounts that also start with the letter T. So here we'll need to define additional variables from our query. Now if we want to catch all accounts that start with the letter T, under the name drop down box here, we'll choose starts with. And in the field to the right, we'll just type the letter T and then click on OK. Now under the query string box, we can see there's our new LDAP query. It's been created for us. When we click on OK, the query is going to run. And there we can see the results of the query. So all of these accounts listed here have non-expiring passwords. And as you can see, they also all start with the letter T. Now, if you want to check just to prove that this is true, you can right click on any of these accounts and choose properties, then the accounts tab. And down here, we can in fact see that password never expires box is checked. So if we check another one, again, we can see the same thing there. So let's say that we want to change all these accounts so that that password never expires box is no longer checked. Well, this is where this query feature really shows its usefulness. So finding these accounts in Active Directory is only half the battle. Manipulating and changing the properties of all of them in bulk is the other half. So we'll select the first account and we'll hold down Shift and we'll select all of these accounts here. And once you've highlighted all the accounts that you want to change, simply right click on any of them and then choose Properties. And this is going to bring up the Properties for Multiple Items dialog box. And on these five tabs here, we can change the contact information, account properties, locations, profiles, company details, and so forth. So let's click on the account tab. And here we have the options relating specifically to the account options, UPN suffixes, logon hours, and logon restrictions. But note here under the account options section that we have two sets of checkboxes. Now, if we want to apply changes to our existing settings, we'll first need to check the box on the left-hand side. And I will point out, that even though this window doesn't say it, 
This left hand column here means remove the setting. The right hand column means to add it. So in our case, we've searched for accounts that have the password never expires box checked. So we're going to place a check in the left hand password never expires box. And that of course is going to remove that setting. But let's say we want to force these users to change their password the next time they log on. Well, first we'll need to check the box here, user must change password at next logon on the left, and that's going to remove the setting. Then the grayed out box on the right becomes enabled. So because we want to add this property to our user accounts, we'll also need to place a check in the right hand box. Now, it might seem a little silly doing it this way, but hey, I didn't write it. I can only show you how it works. So let's go and click on OK. And a word of warning here, Notice that we didn't get any sort of confirmation message telling you that this change worked and was applied. Well, trust me when I say this, no news is good news, or perhaps bad news if you made some sort of configuration you shouldn't have. If you do see a message pop up, then you made a configuration error. If you don't get a message like we just saw here, then your change, whether it was a good one or a bad one, was applied. So if we go and right click on any of these accounts and select properties, and then the account tab. You'll notice that the password never expires box is no longer checked and users now will be forced to change their password the next time they log on. All right, well, let's click cancel here and we'll go back into these accounts and we'll change the settings back so that the password never expires box is checked again. So we'll select all the accounts, we'll choose properties and then we'll go to the account tab. But this time, let's try and change a setting that will deliberately result in an error. All right, well, we know that currently the user must change password at next logon box is checked, and we know that because we just said it that way a moment ago. So this time, let's add in a check on password never expires box on the left, and we'll also add that in on the right. Now, the more astute members watching this video would realize that you can't have password never expires when you have user must change password at next logon as they contradict each other. So in theory, at least, this should produce an error. But before we go and click on OK, let's go and make a couple of other changes. We'll go to the General tab here, and we'll add in a web address. So we'll use winstructor.com. And let's go to the Organization tab, and we'll add in a company here. And we'll also add in Winstructor. And why don't we make these guys a member of the Marketing Department? All right, now we'll click on OK, and we can see the error telling us that the options we've just set conflict. And if we scroll across here, it says you cannot select both user must change password at next logon and password never expires, but we already knew that. All right, well, before I click close here, actually at the top here, you can see if any changes were applied to these accounts and on which tabs the user properties were affected. Now, take note here that this message can be a little misleading. Here at the top, we can see that the changes that we made on the general tab were successfully applied. And you will recall, we made a change where we added in the web address of winstructor.com. But if you didn't make any changes on the general tab at all, you'll still see this message here telling you that the general tab was applied successfully. This multiple properties utility, if I move this back here, this window, you can see the five tabs. It just applies changes in the tabs from left to right. Now, if there aren't any changes, it doesn't actually make changes to those selected accounts, but it's still gonna process them and say that it was successful. So just bear this in mind before you start wondering what on earth this utility has just done. Now, at the bottom of this window here, we can see any changes that have still not been applied. So any tab that appears after an error was encountered is gonna be listed here. So our change we made on the organization tab was obviously not applied. So if we click close, this multiple properties box is gonna stay open so we can fix any errors and then rerun the changes. So let's just click cancel here and we'll right click on one of these accounts and we'll choose properties. Now you'll notice that on the general tab, our web page change was successful. If we go to the account tab, our password never expires box, of course, isn't checked because that was what produced the error. And if we go to the organization tab, we can see none of our changes were applied there. Okay, now let's go back 
and we'll have a further look at what other queries we have available. So instead of creating a new query, this time we'll come over here to the left and we'll right click on our existing query and then choose edit. Now we'll click on the define query button and let's briefly discuss the other options we have available to us. Now if we select this drop down box here, we can choose to query our users, contacts and groups, just computer accounts by themselves, printers, shared folders, OUs, or we can create a custom search as well. So for example, if we were to choose say printers, we can search for printers that have certain name or description or have certain features. So if we click on the features tab, we can look for printers that can print double sided, can staple or can print in color or a specific paper size that support that, a certain resolution, or of course a certain speed. Now on the advanced tab, if we click on this little field drop down box here, we have a vast amount of options here, such as things like printer location, the model of the printer, a share name, or how fast the printer is. So let's say we wanted to find all Epson printers in our domain. Well, we could choose model and then just type in the value of Epson. Now, if we click on OK, we'll just say yes. There we can see our LDAP query has been written for us. As you can see, there's a huge amount of possibilities here, and I'm certain you'll find what it is that you're looking for. The power of this tool is amazing, and I thoroughly recommend that you go and take a good long look at it. But before we finish up here, let's just touch on a few of the other options that we have. Now, all queries are automatically saved up here in the left-hand side by default under our Saved Queries folder, but you don't need to manually save them. If you've created a whole bunch of queries, you can create folders here to help you organize them. And to do that, we'll simply right click on saved queries and choose a new folder. And let's just call this one passwords. And now you can either right click inside this folder, you can create new subfolders or queries directly inside that folder. And we can also drag and drop any query into a folder, which is nice. So we could select our no expired passwords and just drag and drop it into our folder. If we expand that, there's our query. Now finally, if you right click on a saved query and choose to export the query definition, we can export this to an XML file. So let's just give this a name. I'll save this on my desktop here and I'll call this one passwords and we'll click save. And if I now wanted to import that on a different domain controller, I'll just simply come up here and choose to import the query definition. And there's our save query. So we'll select that and then click open. And I'll just change the name here from no expired passwords to no expired passwords two, since we already have a query by that name. We'll click on OK. And of course, there's our query. Now, finally, if we go and right click on any of our queries, we could choose to copy it. We could rename it. Or if we no longer need it, we can just delete it. So as you've seen in this video, the queries feature of Active Directory users and computers is a really useful and powerful tool. So go and do yourself a big favor and spend some time coming to grips with what it can do. Since prior to this tool being available, you'd need to be pretty good at scripting to come close to what this tool can do to a large quantity of objects in Active Directory. We hope you've enjoyed this video and we'd like to thank you for supporting Winstructor.